Charcuterie boards are everything right now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one with your scrap wood in just an hour. So this project is really great because it uses all scrap wood. So if you have any scrap wood that is about a couple inches longer than you want your board to end up being in the end, grab it and let's use it up. So um, it doesn't matter what it is, I have all different things here. So whatever you come up with scrap wood is gonna make your board very unique. Just grab whatever you've got and head on over to your saw. You're gonna use a compound micro saw. What we're gonna do is set this to a 30 degree. Uh, and so what we're going to do is start cutting out our boards where they've got two ends parallel, 30 degrees to 30 degrees, and the long point to the short point measurement is about how wide you want your overall serving board to be. So I got the first cut, and then for the parallel cut, I'm just going to move it down, but I'm going to figure out how wide I want this board to be. So whatever this measurement is, so it'll be 11 and a quarter is what I've got here. I'm just going to keep it at that. So what I'm going to do is I might set a stop block up. So I can just bring it to the end of the saw. So I'm going to cheat here. I don't want to measure every single board right. So I'm just going to bring this point here to the edge of my saw. It's flush and I'll know that's where I want to cut every board. You can measure and mark everyone, or you can put a stop block if you have that. figuring out as I go and kind of as I piece stuff together thinking oh this would be a good channel for like square crackers and this would be a good channel for nuts and just kind of allowing myself to be creative as I create this piece which I encourage you to do as well so I cut them a little bit long and what I'll do is after I attach everything I'm gonna go back with a saw and cut this off square so all I'm gonna do is take some one by twos and I'm just gonna run them along that. So this one's actually perfect as long as it goes past this long point and it goes past this long point, which should be right there, then we're good. For tools, we use 18 gauge brad nailer, one and a quarter inch brad nails. Get some new nails. Okay, so we need a flat level surface because we're going to hold everything flat to the bottom. And start nailing. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. The glue is still drying on this front side, so I'm going to be quick about all this. Uh, so I got it all nailed together, and now I'm going to go ahead and cut those ends off flush. So one thing is I'm just going to flip it over. It's just as beautiful on the back side. And then I'm going to find a sweet spot where I didn't put any nails. Too. So right about, there's a nail there, so I'm going to go just right to there. Make sure there's no nails there. So I'm going to cut that off, and then I'll do the same over here. 
So since this is pretty narrow, I'm just going to cut it on my miter saw. But if it was much wider, you could just use a circular saw and cut right down. And again, make sure you don't have any nails. I drew a line where there's no nails, so I know we're safe. Okay, she's all nailed up, looking beautiful. And um, one thing I want to say is you probably don't want to go much wider than four feet because it might get difficult to pick it up and carry it. I am going to, I am planning on adding some handles to the end, but I may or may not do that. So I'm going to go ahead and stain it up. There's a lot of debate about how you should stain something so that it is food grade. And um, there's a really good article on it, and I'll link that in the description below that pretty much sums up everything that I think. But basically, if it's a butcher block top that you are cutting on all the time, you definitely want to go with a food grade finish, so something that you could ingest. If it's something that you're just using to set food on and display it, um, we may have a cheese knife or something, but not something that's actually cutting into the wood. Um, I think that's fine. You can use whatever you want but just make sure you put a coat of polyurethane to seal everything in. So that way the, the stain doesn't transfer to the food. So um, that's my take on it. Um, <laughs> that's just my take on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, because I want these wood grains to really pop, I'm gonna use Golden Oak by Verithane. The bottom of this piece is just as beautiful as the top. And if you don't want to use it as a serving board, you can just flip it over and use it kind of as a centerpiece. Maybe put some flowers on it or something and it's super beautiful that way too. And it would also be beautiful as just a wall hanging. So you just hang it on your wall and bring that wood texture into your room when you're not using it. And then if you want to use it, just unhook it from the wall and serve and go. So pretty, so unique, and love how you can be super creative with it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that stain dry and then I'll get some poly on it. So the charcuterie board turned out really good. My party's about to start. I cannot wait to see what my guests think of it. My favorite part are these little channels in here where we turn the one by two on edge. Um, those just make me so happy. I also like the two by six part. Um, this big wide flat spot, I wish I'd put some more channels in it. So that's just kind of my personal preference. I'm like, oh, I could have done that just a little bit better. But everything else I'm super, super happy with. And I know you guys are gonna love this project too. And I just can't wait to see it. what you come up with and how you spin it. So we thought it would make a fantastic s'more board. And today I was looking at it and I was like, man, if I just made it a little bit different size, it would be the most beautiful headboard. So a lot of different uses for it. 
Um, it's all up to your personal creativity. So we appreciate you guys watching this week. Head on over to the blog and I'll provide some more details and photos on the charcuterie board. Um, I'm going to take the next two weeks off for some family time over the holidays. So we're going to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so much for being part of our 2019. We'll see you next year.